on a retreat I taught recently, there was a woman who said that her birthday was going to be a few days. She'd be meeting with some friends. And she didn't think she'd be able to tell her friends what she'd done on the day of the retreat. Because the retreat was on aging, illness, and death. They would say, why would you want to listen to something like that? Thinking that the topic is glum, grim, and perhaps thinking there's nothing you can do about aging, illness, and death. But that's not the case in either way. Just think about how the Buddha, as you reflect on aging, illness, and death, this is that chant we had just now. The first four parts of the chant are kind of grim. Aging is unavoidable. Illness, death is unavoidable. We're going to be separated from all that we love. But the Buddha doesn't stop there. He reminds you that you do have your actions. And they will yield results, good or evil. And you have the choice to do the good. Think of that conversation between the Buddha and King Vasanity. Vasanity had been spending the day engaged in the typical heedless pursuits of someone who's in power, wants to maintain power. And the Buddha asked him, suppose someone were to come from the east to say there's a mountain moving in, crushing all living beings. And there's another mountain come from the south and the west and the north. Given that the human breath is so hard to come by, what would you do? And the king said, what else would I do but right conduct, dharma conduct, meritorious actions, skillful actions. And so the Buddha said, well, I declare to you, aging, illness, and death are rolling in. Squashing all beings in their path. What are you going to do? The king's answer was the same. Right conduct, dharma conduct, meritorious conduct, skillful conduct. These reflections are meant to make you heedful. Although it's interesting, the Buddha says that heedfulness lies at the base of all skillful qualities. But there are very few places where he gives a definition. There's one passage where he's talking about stream enterers being heedless. In other words, they have verified confidence in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Their precepts are already pleasing to the noble ones. He says, if you let yourself be content with that, that's heedless. In other words, you can't simply let yourself be content, even with good things in the mind, much less bad. I was listening to a talk a while back where someone was saying that when you read about jhana, it gets you all worked up, and you want to have jhana states in your mind. But the Buddha taught contentment. And so this person was saying that wanting to have your mind in jhana was against the principles of the Buddhist teaching, which is totally wrong. That's the kind of thing you do want. Remember the Buddha's own description of the, what enabled him to gain awakening. Relentless effort and not being content with skillful qualities. In other words, he was heedful. But there's another passage where the Buddha talks about being heedful, or not being heedless. And it reminds you that it's not just grim, working, thinking about dangers all the time, but also learning to be heedful of the good you can do. The passage goes, don't be heedless of merit. And the best way to translate that in English would be, don't underestimate acts of merit. A water jar gets filled, even if the water just comes drop by drop. And 
in the same way a person who's habitually doing good will fill themselves with goodness. Of course, there's the other side as well. Don't be underestimating the evil you can do, even little acts of evil. If they become habitual, again, like the water jar, filling drop by drop by drop, you can fill yourself with evil. So you have to be careful. But remember that the good you do is valuable. Don't look down on it. And learn to appreciate the good you can do. When you find yourself in a bad mood, realize, okay, you can get yourself out, and that's accomplishing something. Because often when you're in a bad mood, you don't want to practice, or the practice suddenly seems uninspiring, or it's not worth it. You have to realize that's all wrong view. That would come under what the Buddha would call unskillful behavior. Because when King Basanity said, meritorious actions, skillful actions, you probably heard what the Buddha had to say. Meritorious actions, of course, are generosity, virtue, and developing goodwill. Skillful actions have to do with the, the Ten Guidelines. No killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no divisive speech, no harsh speech, no idle speech. And then for the mind, no inordinate greed, no ill will, and developing right view. So these are the things that you shouldn't underestimate. They can do good for you. Even little things like generosity. You think of ways in which you can add to the goodness of the world, even if it's just immediately around you. When I was at Mount Thomas, it hit, especially during the time of construction, my job was to look after all the cleaning up around the monastery. And I found that by cleaning up the place, I felt that I really belonged. Because I put something of myself into the place. And I was getting something back. So don't underestimate acts of merit, and don't underestimate the joy that can come from being heedful. After all, what are you being asked to do? Be generous. Be virtuous. Think thoughts of goodwill for everybody. That should be a source of joy. Learn to behave in ways that avoid harm. That's a source of joy. So there's a joy in being heedful. And the more you appreciate that, the better your practice will go.